Welcome back to the Devlog series on my indie game Cube God. The game is progressing very well. And I'm excited to show you what I got today. A couple weeks ago, I did a play test for all of those who wanted to get into the game and try it out for the first time. And I received a ton of feedback, and it was all very good. Now, if you want to get more information on how you could get into the next play test, join my Discord server. I'll leave a link down below. Now, without further ado, here are 13 different ways I revamped my indie game Cube God after the playtest. The island in my game was always this dull and plain square with no variety. So the new island system has three different island sizes, small, medium, and large. Every island is randomly placed together and is now surrounded by a sandy beach. Those that tested the game said that the camera shake and pixelization slightly hurt their eyes. So I decided to remove both. I thought about just lowering the pixelization to just be a higher quality, but ended up deleting it altogether to get a smoother look on the game. This change was so necessary, it was insane. None of the resources in the game respawned. So if you ran out, you were SOL. So now the resources gradually respawn on your island over time. A critical feedback I received was that there was no creative thinking when you got to building your city. The current iteration requires you to build a town center, then have roads go out, and the buildings must be connected to the roads. This makes things feel very cramped and lowers the amount of places you can build. I actually deleted the town center, and for now I've gone away with roads. So now when you're building, you can build anything you want, anywhere you The build UI was distracting. You could move while you were in it and accidentally squish your buildings that you worked for. So I moved it to the bottom of the screen so it no longer blocks the gameplay. I changed the theme a little bit to give it a little bit more life and make it not so dark. I created these icons to display as well. And if you like these icons and you're a developer, then you can check out my new UI icon. There are a total of 50 of these icons included with more coming soon. 25 being colored and 25 being in black and white. There are a crazy variety of what icons are included, so there's bound to be something for everyone. So you can check that out. I'll leave a link down below for that as well. Accidentally destroying your buildings and squishing your citizens was initially added as an interesting way to prevent the cube from being so powerful but it ended up not being very rewarding. So I decided to disable destruction so you can freely walk through the buildings and the citizens. But if you press the new demolish key, you enter a demolish mode where you can only break buildings. If you destroy a building, you now receive half of the resources you spent back. The AI for the citizens and the animals were so stupid. The animals would walk through objects and walk off the map. The citizens pathing the road was sometimes confusing. And with the change of roads needed, this needed to be changed in. So I added nav mesh pathing that updates as the island is changing. So now the animals no longer leave the island and path around resources and buildings. The town center was supposed to be the hub of your city, but it was just a road with flares that the citizens would spawn in. When I removed the town center, I replaced it with the town hall. This building is no longer just a building to spawn the mayor, but instead is the center of your city where you will spawn all of your citizens. You simply just need five gold and enough population to spawn a citizen. The old citizens path the roads. The new ones walk similar to that of the animals. They will wander around the city using this new nav mesh AI. The gatherer citizens would walk similar to that of the regular citizens in the old one and then just pop a little icon above their head saying that they gathered something. This was pretty dull. Now they gather with you. When you spawn different gatherer types, they will hunt down their proficient resource and smash it into pieces to gather it just like you do. In my test, you needed a house for every citizen on the map. This didn't even include that you needed some resource buildings for gatherers as well. This ended up making the building amount greater than the amount of citizens you had at a time. 
So I increased the population of the houses. So now each house allows two citizens to be in the city at a time. The citizens had no personality, and if you have a ton of them, there's nothing unique about them and you can't tell them apart. They just look like a swarm of citizens. So I gave every citizen a name. When the citizen is born, they are given a random name. Whether you want that citizen to gather wood or gather stone, the name will stay the same. The storage buildings, such as the silo, were added to increase max resources. So you wouldn't just idle to get to infinite numbers. But other than that, they served no purpose. Instead, now the resource building is the building required to create the citizens of that gathering profession. So for the silo, you can now get the farmer. After the citizen gathers the resource, the building is used as a drop-off location to gain the resource. The last change I made was that of the resource production buildings. When I first created these, they were auto-producing the resources over time. And for the playtest, I switched that production to the citizen. Both of these were left. So now, after the resource production at the building is done, it becomes an extra resource that your gatherers can pick up. So you can place them closer to your storage drop-offs for a more supply of resources. If you have any ideas or suggestions for CubeCon, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next devlog.